Okay, welcome to a new episode of Nate's MMA Corner. I'm Nate, and if you watch my show, you're in my corner. Today's episode is a post-fight show for UFC 225. Um, yeah, this card was just amazing top to bottom. I was on the edge of my seat. Uh, like I said on my pre-fight show, this was a stacked card, and it lived up to the hype as far as I'm concerned. Um, there were a couple matches as a fan I was not the happiest of, but I was like, you know what, there's going to be some other matches that are probably going to make up for it, and boy was I right. Um, so, yeah, as a post fight, run down the main card and let's get started. So, the main event was a middleweight clash, just a middleweight bout because the title was not on the line because Yoel Romero missed weight, so Whitaker was just fighting Yoel Romero uh, and in a five-round main event. Um... It's, it's more just for pride, you know, Robert Whitaker wins, he has bragging rights that he beat Romero twice, and um, sure enough he did just that, he won split decision, and I think that's just viable. Well, I had three rounds for Whitaker, two for uh, Romero, I had round three and five for Romero. If you look at the stats, uh, pretty much goes that way, and then round one, two, and four were for Whitaker, and Whitaker is a warrior, he really soldiered on. And that truly did deserve five of the night. I thought Whitaker was going to be out in that, I believe, fourth round or fifth round, was it? Anyways, uh, there's a part where he hits the ground and he's hunched over and you're like, oh, this could be it, the ref's going to stop it, but the ref didn't. UL was trying to finish him, but Whitaker found just enough energy to get back on his feet. And he did it, and he won 48-47, um, and two 48-47s uh, won him the fight. And so he, in theory, would have defended his belt, essentially. I mean, Romero was only off by 0.2 pounds, and uh, Whitaker beat him now twice, so it sort of ends the possible uh, talks of a trilogy. And uh, I, I, I'm happy for Whitaker. He deserves his victory. He made weight. He showed up to fight. And Romero, I think, should just go to light heavyweight, and he will no longer have issues. Hopefully the UFC forces him to do it, whether he likes it or not. I think all the fans and I would like to see that happen. And the light heavyweight division uh, could use a little boost uh, and something, a wrench to throw in there would be fun to watch. Plus you have some good contenders for Whitaker like uh, Kelvin Gastelum and uh, maybe Chris Weidman uh, shortly down the line. So anyhow, and oh yeah, if Luke Rockhold racks up a win or two uh, at middleweight, assuming he wants to ever fight again at middleweight than he could. But anyways, yeah, so Robert Whitaker won a uh, split decision. Then in the co-main event, we had a well interim welterweight clash with Colby Covington and Hoff Hoffield dos Anjos RDA. And Colby Covington lived up to the hype as far as I'm concerned. I was telling people that I was watching this with that Colby would land at least one takedown per round and then land some strikes uh, to keep himself busy and to keep RDA off from landing uh, some killer combinations. And that's pretty much what he did. And he won this fight fair and square. He won um, decision unanimous. I disagree with the 48-47s. I think it was at least 49-46. Uh, you could debate round one because um, RDA did land some heavy shots, but then uh, Covington got some takedowns in that round. Um, but other than that, it was pretty much all Covington, and he won. It, so it was a pretty uh, good fight. And uh, Colby Covington is your new UFC interim welterweight champion of the world. Then, in the women's featherweight division with Holly Holm versus Megan Anderson. This blew me away, because I was expecting Megan Anderson to take Holly Holm to the ground. And instead, it was the other way around. And I thought Megan Anderson would take Holly to the ground, because she didn't want to stand and bang with a world-class boxer. Uh, and she could do it and then maybe work in uh, some submission skills in top position. But sure enough, um, Holly Holm is the, the, it was the other way around. She won fair and square, and I believe they got the got this one right, 30-27 and two 30-26s. Holly Holm uh, definitely deserves um, cred, some st street cred in, in uh, the featherweight division. And um, can't wait to see what she does next. Holly Holm is definitely a, a talented fighter. 
And Megan Anderson definitely showed that I think she belongs in the UFC. And hopefully um, we see some more big matchups with her because I enjoyed watching her in Invicta. Then in the heavyweight division, we had um, Tai Tuivasa versus Andre Olofsky. Yeah, this one was just, wow. I didn't think it was going to go the distance like the way it did. But, uh, yeah, I, I was expecting it to be like Arlovsky gets takedowns every round. And he was pushing for him, and Ty was stuffing some of them. And, uh, but, yeah, I think the right guy won this fight. 29-28 unanimous decision across the board for Ty Tuivasa. Ty was just a little bit busier of a fighter on the stand-up. And then he did get some dominant positions on the ground. But uh, Arlovsky was good at uh, dealing with it and hung in there the best he could. And uh, yeah, Tai Tuivasa is definitely a uh, top 10 caliber uh, heavyweight. And uh, it'll be interesting to see where he goes from here. Then, uh, to kick off the pay-per-view, we had Mike Jackson versus CM Punk at welterweight. Wow, this was shocking because I thought that um, CM Punk would win on the strikes instead it was Mike Jackson winning on the strikes and then uh, Mike Jackson did his thing uh, avoiding the ground game real well because I thought that's another thing is like CM Punk you know train in Gracie Jiu Jitsu for so long that he'll be bum rushing for those takedowns and just even just one he'll be able to get a submission in there um, or work in some ground and pound and, and win the fight by decision you know you know going for a finish I did not expect it to be the way Mike Jackson basically dominates CM Punk the way he did and get uh, three 30-26s that was um, pretty impressive for Mike Jackson I, I gotta admit and I you know like I I kind of felt you know as a aspiring MMA journalist felt like in him being on the MMA beat I was kind of rooting for him in a sense uh, because of that, it's like, oh yeah, he's representing the MMA journal journalist community, media community, uh, and um, so yeah, Mike Jackson did his thing and he won. Um, hopefully, we see more Mike Jackson in the UFC, and I think Walter Wade's a, actually a good weight class because if he goes down to lightweight, it might be too big of a cut, and he already looks pretty skinny at Walter Wade, and I think uh, middleweight would be too big for him. So Walter Wade's a good weight class. Anyhow, so Mike Jackson won 30-26 across the board. Um, just a great striking display is what really made him win this fight. Then, honorable mention on the prelims, we had Alistair Overeem versus uh, Curtis Blades. Curtis Blades had a big win. TKO elbows round three. And uh, the ref did a great job stopping that fight because he was busted up. And uh, for Alistair's safety, I'm glad the refs uh, called it off. And then uh, Mursad Bektik had a, a pretty impressive performance over a tough, durable veteran, Ricardo Lamas. And then also, um, in the light heavyweight division, Anthony Smith, uh, KO knee, Rashad Evans, uh, 53 seconds in round one. That was impressive. And then uh, the yeah submission guillotine show, Charles Oliveira over Clay Guida, uh, Guida in round one, two minutes, 18 seconds. That was real impressive, too. So anyhow, uh, stay tuned in the coming days for my... Uh, that wraps up this show. Stay tuned in the coming days for my pre-fight show for UFC Fight Night uh, Cowboy versus Leon Edwards in uh, Singapore, I believe it is. And, um, yeah, uh, Donald Cowboy Cerrone versus Leon Edwards is going to be a great striking clinic in the main event there, so don't miss that one. And I will, so I, I will do a pre-fight on that one. And until then, I will see you.